Hey guys, what's going on? Carter here. Had a lot of people that wanted to see this video. So, me being the kind individual that I am, decided to put it up for you. Uh, this is going to be a closer look. You could call it a review, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just a look at this beautiful piece of functional art, the Salmonero Bullseye that I have here. Uh, I got this in, what was it, like a week and a half ago, a week ago, something like that. Let's get some specs real quick. I, you know, I can't for the life of me keep track of my little mini tape measure. It always, I think my kid takes it places. It's got the, uh, it's listed as a three and a half inch blade. I'd say more like three and three quarters, really. Overall length, you're looking about nine inches. So not a small, not a small folder by any means. He does do a mini bullseye, which has uh, got about a three inch blade. This features titanium bolsters. It's got the classic milled out bullseye right here. Uh, CPM 154 CM steel. There's the logo. Thumb disc opening. This has, let me try to get a close up here. It says silver twill G10. And if anybody can chime in and tell me why this is considered G10, let me know. Uh, I don't know much about this stuff, but to me it looks like silver carbon fiber. I mean, you can see the uh, you can see the woven pattern there. So it's definitely not what you'd consider regular G10. This particular one features a slightly different clip. Usually, the clip he puts on these bullseyes kind of uh, curve, and then it has these milling marks in it that almost perfectly just line up, uh, kind of like somebody just did it in one pass but it's on both the scale underneath and above somebody else noticed how this doesn't sit flush uh, I don't know if this came from the maker that way this didn't come directly from the maker uh, but I can tell you one thing I did put this in my pocket and if it was flat there's no way you'd get this thing out of there with this grooving here it just bites right into your pocket so uh, that may have been something the previous owner did has this nice file work on there which is pretty cool and it has kind of a uh, the bolsters I don't know if you can see it um, but it has a uh, orange peel texture to it a very nice orange peel very consistent orange peel texture on it so does the pocket clip here now the blade it is beautifully hand rubbed so you can see, I mean, it's like, uh, that's a little, little hair there. It is just perfect. I mean, getting a, a good hand rubbed finish. And I know Exacto is going to say something about that. He's going to have a joke for that. But uh, getting a good hand rubbed finish is very hard to do and very, you know, not that common to find. A lot of the times, you know, it'll, it'll look nice in spots, but maybe it'll veer off a little bit. But this is just all the rub lines go perfectly in the right direction and don't veer. So this blade is a uh, compound grind, complex grind, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Strider calls it a nightmare grind. Uh, so basically it's got two completely different grinds on the same blade. So this here is a hollow grind and this is a flat grind. And so you're, you'll get a much thinner slicing edge right here whereas you'll get a much beefier, stronger edge at the tip. Uh, so, you know, that would mean you can do a lot of thrusting with it into hard materials with less chances of this edge breaking and chipping and things like that. But you can still do some nice slicing back here. It's got a nice, uh, I'm not sure what you'd call that. It's not really a swedge. It's got a swedge here. It's kind of like a mirrored swedge version of the uh, compound grind, really. And if you look, the thumb stud, as soon as we can focus here, it has hand checkering. All of his stuff is done by hand. He has a CNC machine, but it's all hand, it's just not going to focus. It's all hand ran. So this is all file work that he did by hand. Amazing stuff. The jimping is like the hardest cut jimping I think I've ever seen. And it is just super grippy. The uh, file work is also on the backspacer here. 
So it sits just proud of the liners, which of course are titanium. Nice big stop pin. That file work is just killer. Looks like the uh, check ring on the back strap of a 1911. A nice high-end 1911. Now, uh, just a little history on here. You can see the nice thick lock bar, early lock up. Oh, by the way, yeah, this thing is smooth as freaking butter. I mean, it is just, that blade just flies open, flies closed. And uh, I think in the last video, I wasn't sure what the washers are, but they are just really small bronze phosphorus washers. It's amazing that he was able to get this level of smoothness out of those kind of washers. I thought for sure they'd be Teflon. Perfect centering. The detent uh, is insane. Like it is, I like strong detents, and this is about as strong as you could possibly functionally get. I mean, you've got to really pop it. It. You can hear it. I mean, it just slams home. Just the craftsmanship on this thing is outstanding, guys. No gaps on any of the uh, mating of the liners and the titanium bolsters. Everything is contoured. These bolsters just really melt in with the uh, liners. It almost just looks like it's one thick piece and not two pieces put together. I mean, really, look at that. You can barely even see, focus would help, but you can barely even see the line that separates the two. Everything is nice and contoured. You've got this great thumb ramp. Ergonomics are outstanding. Your finger just goes right in there, goes right home. Now I'd heard, he did a post on a forum not too long ago that he was going to submit a design to Boker uh, to be produced. I wasn't sure if he was joking or serious. So I, I don't know if uh, there's legitimacy to that claim or not, but maybe, you never know. Boker has been working with some uh, really good makers and putting some good stuff out. I first heard about Sal, believe it or not, here on YouTube of all places. It was on a channel called Quiet Bear. Um, you guys probably don't know about it because it's been inactive a little over a year ago. I don't know. I don't know what happened to the guy, but he did a lot of really good videos. A lot of the stuff he said really sticks to me now, kind of like why buy high-end knives. He was really into metallurgy and talking about how different steels perform and and the makeup of them and things like that. What's funny though is he never actually showed high-end knives. He would always talk about them and he would do these awesome interviews with makers. I don't know how he got access to them. Wow, you see that? See how it just falls, falls closed? Anyways, um, I don't know how he got access to them, but somehow he did. And one of the interviews, one of his latest videos actually, was I think uh, second or third to last video he ever did, was a really good interview with Sal. Um, he talked about his philosophy of knife making, he showed a bunch of designs off and, and really cool stuff. I'll go ahead and put the link down below, even though more than likely that video is going to show up kind of by the auto picker from... Uh, YouTube, but uh, very good video. I wish that guy would come back. The reason why I picked this one up, I've, I've, sorry, I'm all over the place. You know me. I've wanted a uh, knife from Sal for a long time. They're obviously expensive. They're not cheap. He's got about a two-year backlog. Um, I don't believe he's a full-time knife maker. I believe he does have quote unquote a real job, and that he uh, does this on the side. And I really almost prefer in some ways makers that are like that because it almost seems like they're able to dedicate themselves to their craft a little bit more than somebody that has to pay the bills with knives seems like sometimes not all the time and not with every maker uh, but it seems like sometimes they can get a little caught up in trying to get as much product out the door that sometimes things will slip a little bit because you know they're trying to feed their kids so it seems like part-time makers can really just take their time with pieces and you know they're not trying to rush so that they can pay their electric bill. Uh, they do it for themselves as much as they do it for the people buying the knives. But uh, yeah, he's been in the game for quite a while and he's really known as just a detail-oriented knife maker. Just very precise. 
Sorry guys, this uh, camera will only do 10 minutes of time of HD. But a real precise maker, renowned kind of for uh, his detail and skills and things like that. But this this one I just, I had to have it. I didn't necessarily have the money, <laughs> but uh, I, just, I just had to have it. A lot of his designs are really like in your face. He'll do a lot of uh, Mokutai and Meteorite and just really... Uh, gnarly materials, Damascus, you know, almost art knifey. But this piece was just so nice and subdued and subtle. Um, I just, I had to have it. So I did. I got it for better or for worse. So that's it guys. Sorry about uh, the rambling and whatnot, but uh, that's that. That's the impression of my Salmonero Bullseye. Very nice knife. If you can ever pick one up from him, I would definitely recommend doing it. Alright guys, take it easy.